Hello and welcome to Union Solidarity International. This is our weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and I'm with Andrew Brady. Um, Andrew, we have launched an exciting new thing this week, which is our branch affiliation. Do you want to tell people all about that? Absolutely, Walton. As of this week, we have launched our branch affiliation strategy that we hope union branches and various unions will participate mm -hmm. in. It's very important uh, for USI and that the branch affiliation strategy goes well, primarily because we want the project to enthuse the rank and file members of our union, of our union movement, about how international issues are relevant to them, mm -hmm. and that how USI has tried to bring the relevance of that in different ways, whether it's been through our web conferencing, which we are planning to do far more of over the coming weeks with some exciting guests, and also whether it's via our different media streams, podcasting, snippet, Twitter, Facebook, how we're harnessing and utilising all these different media streams in order to engage the rank and file member about the international issues which are relevant to us because we're all part of the same struggle that is going across our world at the moment and getting union members and union branches to participate uh, in our structures in order to give a greater degree of solidarity mm -hmm. with our brothers and sisters across our world. I think it's a very exciting development mm -hmm. for us and we hope that union members and union branches will see the potential of our branch affiliation strategy which we're keen to explore the idea of branch twinning mm -hmm. with different union branches across our world, particularly in Greece where we've got a very important solidarity campaign and how USI can bring to the table the technology we have at our disposal to cut through those mm -hmm. geographical borders and to give real life to internationalism on a daily basis. Yeah. I think that's very exciting, Andrew, and I think where USI is different from other organizations and, and other campaigns is that it's very much about using the tools and the technology that we have to put people directly in touch with each other so that it's not about us as USI, but about this, this union branch or this group of uh, trade unionists in this country and their brothers and sisters in another country and how can we help facilitate a relationship between them so that they can work together and provide practical support and solidarity because I think you share my analysis that at this time in the, the global financial crisis that we have and the austerity that we're facing for us to be able to work together is more crucial now than, than ever, would you agree? Absolutely. I, I'm of the opinion and I know many people share this, that this is potentially perhaps one of the most critical times for our union movement across the world where we are seeing what has been called austerity but what the social consequences of that are far greater than the word austerity. Mm -hmm. the, the social evils that have been created as a result of this neoliberal mm -hmm. economic programme that has been rolled out across our world, then the time is now to unite and there's various different ways in which we can do that and we see USI as being part of mm -hmm. that conversation about how we can unite mm -hmm. trade unions and progressives across our world. Part of a strategy, there's a large, there's a larger conversation to be mm -hmm. had, but we really believe in USI and I, I hope those who have, are supporting us also see that we have a perhaps unique role to play in that with the mm -hmm. technology that we have at our disposal and the various ways in which we use that technology, Walton. And, I'm really excited about the, the potential of our branch affiliations mm -hmm. only because we want to ensure that the struggles that are going on across our world are relevant to people in Britain and Ireland and that through USI as part of the conversation we can help make that a little bit more relevant to mm -hmm. union members. Okay. Andrew, I thought I'd go through some of the, the top union news stories for this week. Is that all right? We'll Absolutely. We'll hear what, uh, what struggles are happening around the world, what we can learn from them, and maybe what we can do to support them. So um, starting in North America, um, there is a political party called the Progressive Conservatives, uh, if that is not a, a contradiction in terms, in Canada. And uh, in the Ontario federal government, they are mounting the usual assault on trade union rights. Obviously, they're claiming that this is to do with uh, 
helping the economy grow its way out of out of a recession. But just interesting to note that exactly the same arguments are being used by the same kinds of politicians in every country in the world. Um, so, of course, solidarity to those unions in Canada who, who are resisting that attack on their right to organize. In New York, in uh, Con Ed, which is a utility company, have, have locked out 8,500 members of the Utility Workers Union of America in a dispute, and they are attempting to use scab labor to keep the, the network running, which is causing problems because New York is currently uh, experiencing a heat wave. Um, UWUA is the same union whose members were locked out of a nuclear power plant about a month ago and that company thought that using scab labor to run a nuclear power plant was a, a very wise idea. So um, very interesting to watch that particular dispute. Um, and another one that's caught our eye because of the, the amount of uh, campaigning that's been done is Palermo's Pizza in Milwaukee uh, have been on strike for a month mm -hmm. over um, people being fired for attempting to organize a union, and they've done quite well on the social media. Uh, they have a website called A Slice of Justice, which uh, we liked. We thought that was a good use of social sure. media to, uh, to highlight campaigns. Um, Italy, as we know, uh, is facing the same kind of austerity as the rest of Southern Europe, and uh, Mario Monti, the Prime Minister, has said to unions that they're going to be facing job cuts in the public sector. The unions have said if he pushes ahead with that, they are, he's likely to face a general strike. The miners in Spain continue their march uh, to protect their pay and conditions. Uh, in Norway, 700 offshore workers uh, are striking over pensions. And uh, in the Czech Republic, the government is once again promising more austerity. The big news that we've seen in the UK is with Barclays, uh, the bank, which uh, demonstrates for us that far from being wealth creators, the finance sector often seems almost quite criminal. Mm. Um, uh, I don't know if you have any particular comments on that, but uh, we are constantly amazed at the extent to which, that, which uh, the people at the top of the finance sector have been able to get away with what is essentially corporate crime and which has wrecked, uh, wrecked the economy. Absolutely. I, I mean, it's very interesting the, the language that is used to describe those at the top of the, the tree, particularly in our financial institutions who preside over what can only be described as criminality, whereby it has been described in the mainstream media as irregularities. And a wonderful clip this week by the, the broadcaster and presenter Max Kaiser gives a, a fantastic dissection of how crime at the top of the tree is different languages used, such as irregularities, but when it's people allegedly committing benefit fraud, they're pillared, uh, and the language to describe these piece, these people who are involved in this can be quite disgusting, but yet how, how it's interesting a different language is introduced into those at the top of the tree, Walton, who commit what can only be described as crimes. Mm. Absolutely. Um, back to the labour news. Um, in Turkey, 71 trade unionists have been arrested for organising unions. Uh, the state uses the pretext that they're cutting down on uh, terrorism. Um, so something to be worried about because we know how that word terrorist is bandied about and I wouldn't be surprised to hear more governments around the world using that as an excuse to cut down on, on organizing. There is a, a labor start campaign to free the trade unions in Turkey and we would encourage people to sign up to that. Um, also Kazakhstan, uh, there are oil workers who are facing harsh prison sentences for taking industrial action. And also in Kazakhstan, uh, metal workers uh, are striking for a 30% pay increase. So we certainly hope that they manage to achieve that. Um, and then some good news from South Africa, where the two municipal workers unions, uh, Samu and Imatu, um, essentially took the South African Lo Local Government Association to court over failing to implement a pay agreement from 2009. They won, which means that uh, tens of thousands of low-paid council workers in South Africa will get two years worth of back pay, Absolutely. which is excellent and it's going to put money back in people's pockets. Um, I think uh, economics is important at the moment and we've certainly kept an eye on essentially any rational idea to escape from, from the recession. And this is important because the message coming from the neoliberals is that there is no alternative. And I think part of our role as USI is to say there are man many alternatives and there are many sensible and rational things that we could do. And part of what we can do is give them all a hearing and let's debate them openly. And uh, 
in that line, we're having a web conference on uh, Friday afternoon with Stephanie Kelson, yeah. who is uh, one of the proponents of a theory called modern, modern monetary theory, which is a very interesting concept about how the state can spend its way out of recession. Um, you're welcome to join us for that. We'd love to hear your questions and to hear your views on that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we'll continue to push uh, ideas about how we can grow the economy and build out of, out of recession instead of allowing what is essentially, essentially a robbery and a, a massive concentration and flow of wealth from working people up to the top. You know, we need to find a way to stop that. Andrew, that's all I have this week. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I would just like to compliment what you said there, Walton, about about how we've got our webinar with Stephanie Kelton uh, on Friday. And I think that's very important because what also that demonstrates is our ability to use the technology that we have mm -hmm. at our disposal to connect with someone in Kansas, mm -hmm. in America, and have the opportunity to have a discussion and let other people, as we like to say, join the conversation as we go forward with USI as a project. That's something we wish to do, not only give oxygen to ideas, whether that's in content or as a podcast or via some of our media streams, but the opportunity to link up with people across mm -hmm. the world is vitally important because for our movement at the moment, it is, the need for that is, is greater than perhaps ever before. Mm -hmm. Thank you for continuing to engage with USI and we welcome your views. Please be in touch with us.